Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video, I will provide complete detail about VPA. Before we drive into the theory, let me give you a scenario where you might need to use VPA. Let's take an example. Here I have a two node cluster and inside this cluster, multiple run services are running and one of the service is both. Having a limited number of resources, CPU is 10 millicore and memory is 50 millibyte. Now, uh, now let's say your user base is increased and large number of data is coming. With the limited number of resources, either your application facing a performance issue or even fail. On the other hand, there are certain time where you really require a limited number of resources. Now in the both case, you have to manually go to the deployment and change the resources. It's not a practical, even it's a time consuming. Now to automate this process, VPA is required. With the VPA, the resources inside the pod will automatically adjust based on the workload demand. So now let's jump to the VPA presentation. So what is vertical pod auto scaling in Kubernetes? So vertical pod auto scaling is a feature in a Kubernetes that allow you to automatically adjust the CPU and memory resources allocated to your pod based on the actual usage. With vertical pod auto scaling, Kubernetes monitor the actual resource usage of a pod and adjust its resources allocation based on that usage. Unlike the horizontal pod auto scaling which scale the number of replica of a pod. How does a vertical pod auto scaling work? So vertical pod auto scaling work by modifying the resource request and the limits of container in a pod. Resource requests are minimum amount of CPU and memory that container need to function while resource limit are the maximum amount of CPU and memory that container can use. So in the vertical pod, pod auto scaling, you have to define the two properties, minimum amount of CPU and memory and maximum amount of CPU and memory. By modifying this value, Kubernetes can adjust the amount of resources allocated to the container in a pod. Now here to enable the pod auto, pod vertical pod auto scaling, you need to install the vertical pod auto scaler object. Now the VPA object continuously monitor the resource usage of a container in a pod and adjust their resources request and limitation based on the usage. Benefit of vertical pod auto scaling, the first one is efficiency. Vertical pod auto scaling ensure that container have the right amount of resources at all the time. So here two scenario, either you require more resources or you require less resources. So both the time, the vertical pod auto scaling ensure that you might rec you you have a right number right amount of resources which can save the resource and reduce the cost the second is performance by automatically adjust the cpu and memory request vertical pod auto scaling can help prevent under and over utilization of resources resulting in an improved performance and the third is scalability vertical pod auto scaling can help you to scale workloads up and down based on the dynamically adjust the resource request. Best practi uh, practice for implementing the vertical product scaling, understand your workload, start with the default setting and test in a first test in the staging environment first before move to the production. So now what is the conclusion? So vertical product scaling is a powerful tool that can help you to optimize your Kubernetes workload. See you in the demo. So we already have a vote application and in this application we are going to apply the VPA. So let me first copy the VPA definition from Visual Studio. Here you can see uh, the four parameter API version, kind, metadata and spec. So in the API version, autos, autoscaling, kids.io.v1, kind, vertical pod autoscaler, metadata, name, vote, VPA, Inside the spec, you have to provide the resource policy, policy and we have con uh, inside that container policy, container name star, star, 
container re control resources cpu and memory so i want to monitor this cpu and memory and here these two properties are important mean allow and max allow so i go with the max allow one cpu and memory 500 mi mean allow cpu 100 m and memory 500 mi and in this target ref so in the target ref property you need to define so uh, you need to define your application deployment name so here api version apps v1 kind deployment and name equal to vote so if you see here inside this deployment my vote application my deployment name is vote okay so i have defined here vote and update policy update mode auto so here there are two policies auto and recreate i will go with the default policy auto so vpa can decide to terminate and recreate the pod whenever required so let me copy this definition and create now here you can see the vpa is created let's wait for a minute and meanwhile let me open the terminal and let me watch the pod so now here you can see the my vote application pod created five meter ago and let me do now yes so now what i will do here i will open this application and give some random request and now let's wait for five minutes now you can directly see uh, the vpa is now terminating the pod and creating the new pod based on the vpa recommendation so here you can see now this one pod is created before 29 seconds so earlier it was 5 minute and 3 minute now 29 seconds 6 minute okay let's wait so here now by default vpa applied the default recommended cpu and memory limits inside the pod so how you can check so you have to go to this vpa section and here you can see recommendation provide so by default this vote application require 100 m and this much memory you can see here recommendation provide and what is the recommendation cpu 100 m and memory this much i think 262144k and if you go here currently i have defined the resource limitation this much only 100 m and 50 mi so by default this vpa will take care this resource limitation thanks for watching see you in the next video